Whoa, Nelly. Nick Shaheen here looking at support.com. What in the world is going on here? Up 26, 27% in one day on Monday. And that's after weeks of a strong momentum burst. Uh, let's try to make sense of this and what can I do? First of all, this is one of those acronyms that I use in the chat room. THTH. It's too high to chase and too hot to short. So you're either with it already or you just don't touch it. And you definitely don't short it because it's too hot to short. Um, crazy stock. So this is a daily chart about a year's worth of data. Nowhere near enough to tell you really what's going on. This is one year of data. Uh, clearly, there was a headline here. We'll talk about that in a second. Go to a weekly chart. That's still not enough. Go to a monthly chart. Boom. Now the picture comes clean. What in the world? This comes public up here. And what is this? 90% down. <laughs> it's still 90% down from there. I don't know what happened here. That's not my business. So let's go back to a, a daily chart. Okay, so let's talk levels first of all. The first level to note is this one right there, five bucks. The breakout from actually 450. Um, this candle kind of ruined it, so it should have been 450, but let's say four, five, two and a half dollars from five dollars breakup, breakout target. That would be the ideal target from that. There was a neckline here but then foiled with this candle and these two. So if you take it from here, I would assume that 750 should have been the measured move, give or take, because of that funky thing going on. Um, there was clearly a line to draw here at 550, but they didn't even think about it. Boom, up, overshot, came back, said, wait, we overshot. They came back and centered and based in this zone. So this zone is important for the last 12 months this is where they traded it the most that orange line i didn't draw that's the mathematical calculation of all these volume bars this big one here and this clump this clump of volume the most of them happened at 6.8 right there so if i zoom in you can see that line change it drops a little bit if i zoom in it drops a lot of bit so most recently the price action has been closer to here than here. If I go to a whole year, this volume bar makes it up here. So there's a discrepancy. These investors centered all the action up here. This bunch of investors based at four. So you see what I'm trying to say? So this brings it down to where, okay, if I want to get long from a, an investment perspective, forget the headlines. We'll get to that in a minute. I would want it to come back down to this zone before I consider it long for me. Um, that doesn't mean short it. I said that already. So if you're in love with the stock and you think it's going to a bazillion, why are you watching this video? This is not for you. This is for somebody who's contemplating chasing it. Um, even if I miss out on 30, 40, 50, 100 percent, that's fine. It's the wrong thing to chase it up here. How about this? I say it differently. This is not an obvious point of entry. Fair enough neither was this neither was that neither was this so so what so if i didn't get in here i missed out on that much but those that got in here they fell this they lost that much and those who got in here and didn't get out here they lost that much how much is that much that's a shit ton of money <laughs> it's 25 percent tell me you don't get stopped out on a 25 percent loss after two days or three days so Hindsight is perfect. Hey, I went in here and I made the bazillion. Yeah, good for you. But if somebody's thinking about getting in now, they should think about, okay, how likely am I to make even more money from here versus what's the possibility of dropping? So this is where headlines come into play. So now we can talk headlines. Somewhere around here, I'm pretty sure it's middle of March or early March, there was a headline that they're merging, quote, getting bought out with another company, Greenage, something like that. Um, funny part is I looked them up I think they're a mining company for Bitcoin um, strange marriage but let's assume the other company the acquiring company knows what they're doing I, d I didn't find any details on the deal so maybe part uh, maybe they have third-party capital investment money that's coming in to take a portion of it maybe they're borrowing some maybe they're giving away stock I don't think the other company is publicly traded so Nevertheless, there's homework for you to do on a fundamental basis. But what I'm telling you is somewhere around September 10th, 
there's going to be another headline. So somewhere around here, I think that's when this company, support.com, meets to vote on um, passing it or not. I don't know how that's going to happen. Physical Zoom, I have no idea. I don't know how tightly bunched are the investors, but if the offer is anywhere near as good as the stock is telling you to do, they should pass it. Um, but it's an important headline for you to know. Headlines like these are usually binary. I have no clue which one, it's, which way it's going to go. So again, my conclusion would be is like, good job for those who are long. And if you haven't booked anything, hey, you have a different risk profile than I do because I would have booked a while back and missed out on a whole bunch, but that's fine. In the long run, hindsight is twenty twenty. So doing the right thing is never perfect, but you have to do it every time in my book. So whatever that right thing is for you is fine. In this case, if my mother comes to me and say, hey, I'm looking to invest some money into support.com, I'd say, hey, mom, you know what? This is not an obvious point of entry. So, you know, I wouldn't do it, and I don't think you should do it either. That's just me talking to family. Um, if it drops to here and she tells me the same thing, I'll say, you know what? Technically, I okay this. But if you're looking to an investment, you better do some homework and find out more as to what this merger means going forward, what the actual buyout price, what the arbitrage values are. So not having that information is hard to justify it from a fundamental basis. That's why we're talking charts, right? Otherwise, why are you here? Okay, so 120. Let's go down to see if we can have smarter levels on s smaller time frames. Um, just under 9 looked like they, they, they had a little battle at 880. Um, that looking left makes sense because that was a failing point at not too long ago july 28th they fell to here which was also normal price action and this value is clear from this failure here in this floor they tested it for footing and it looks like to me if i were to draw a value at that's important for the last few days it will be 880. so any dip into 880 will find buyers short term from a trading perspective um, eight for sure and so if i'm looking to get long to swing trade this bad boy uh, momentum trade it i should say that would be my entry point um, and tight stop what's the tight stop depends on my risk profile some people like to say okay no more than 20 percent losses some 10 percent future traders take like two percent <laughs> and then they're out so what's your style if you don't have one you should otherwise i wouldn't trade like this actively if i don't have a set system where that gets me in and out uh, so short term there should be a buyer into 880 definitely into eight so these are viable dips so if tomorrow we wake up and it does this and somebody wish they owned it on the way up here and on the way up here that's the trading value in my opinion range i won't be doing this this is just way too wild for my taste I'm in a chat room moderating hundreds of people, actually thousands now. Um, so I definitely don't have time to mess around with this. But a couple of people asked me about it from two different chat rooms I'm in. And um, I figured, hey, what the hell? We'll share a video and see how, how that goes out. Um, again, just zoom out and ask yourself, what the heck's going on? Um, can it get to 20? Sure. <laughs> it, it's been there before and higher. So I don't know what is going on. And uh, if you want to take a lottery ticket, that's fine. I'm not sure that this is an optionable stock. Hey, a whole new conversation. Um, I just peaked. I cheated. I peaked. Okay, so it does have options. That's pretty crazy. All right, so what are options? If you don't know what they are, instead of buying shares, you can reserve your right to buy shares at a certain price. That's what the call side, this side is call side. And um, so I could commit long without having to spring the price for the whole share batch. So for example here, instead of buying 100 shares at $12, um, I could spend $160 and say, I'm locked in at 12 for the next 25 days. So that's why people buy it. It is time sensitive, so time working against you, you want that to happen in the next 25 days, the sooner the better. But hey, it's risking 160 bucks versus 1200 bucks. So that's the pros and cons. So if somebody's betting, this is a cheaper bet, right? For the same outcome. And if you think it's gonna happen in 25 days, that would be it. If you want more time, uh, again, I'm not recommending this. This is a, a way of trading up with options. Um, this it will give you more time, 53 days on the clock. And uh, what were we talking about, 12? So this one will cost you 200 bucks 
to lock in the price at 12. What's the difference? Let's say it spikes tomorrow. These will gain slower than these. Let's test this theory. So, okay, somebody that bought these yesterday, Friday, they all they made 80 percent, okay, on on their money. Uh, somebody that bought the October made 60 to 70, so slightly slower. So if somebody went to December on Friday, um, 50 to 60 down here. These are way too high f for December. They had no action. This is a thinly trade contract. Um, although it's getting action, you know, thousands here in October. Let me see here, September. Crazy stock, man. So, okay, so there were, this column here is called open interest. Quick, quick lesson. This is what the orders were going into today. This is what transpired today. So we came in with 10,000 contracts at 10. Today, there were 12,700 transacted. Tomorrow morning, this number will change once and then will be static all day. This number will reset at zero and we'll start clicking during the day. Uh, so we don't know what the net number will be tomorrow. Uh, nobody reports this dynamically, the open interest. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, who booked where, who rolled to what. Uh, like here there were 8,000 contracts, today there were six almost. Uh, here there were 10, today there were 4,800. Uh, look, 8,000 contracts up here, but there were already 9,600 open. And somebody here, I don't know when they did that, but uh, somebody, I don't know. You can look into it and delve into it. There are, there, are, um, there are platforms that give you that information. All right, that's enough about a stock I don't care really about. <laughs> uh, I'm just helping out a few friends uh, make better decisions, sound decisions. So like I said, missing out on upside shouldn't be upsetting to anybody. If you're in it for the long haul, you're going to have a 100 different uh, scenarios where you could hit giant home runs like these. Um, unless you had inside information, this was unforeseen scenario in my opinion. Nick signing out.